Hello, this is composer and French hornist Richard Burdick, and that's Freddy the Cat. It is Sunday, October 8th in the morning here in Regina, Saskatchewan, Canada, where I've been asked a question, um, how do I feel, what do I feel about performing music by living composers? Is it important to me? And it's actually very important to me. Um, as a matter of fact, I have a premiere happening on the web today of my work. Here it is. Um, snapshot, Opus 326, number one, Pompey's Pillar Closed. Um, it's a work for... English horn, horn, harp, cello, and uh, electronic sounds with videotape of Pompey's Pillar, um, part of my trip to California last summer, 2022, um, where it was flooded. It's very interesting. Um, and if you have more questions for me, you would, need, would go to my website, i-ching-music.com. Scroll down to, oh, there's a contact button here, contact, and there it is, contact me. You can send me an email through that system, and I'm glad to ask, answer. I'm glad to answer other questions. Okay. So I'm having trouble with really coming to terms with music by living composers these days. Um, I've proposed a lot of music by living composers at program and committee meetings that I've been involved with, and I met with a zombie-like um, blankness when I proposed them. It's very strange. Um, and I have a long history since I was manager of Trinity Chamber Concerts in Berkeley, California for 19 years. Long history of presenting premieres, music by new composers, new works, etc. Um, too much to go into, it trying to be two minutes. Um, so here's what I've come up with. I come, came up with this list. Um, a group being of rather unusual um, instrumentation, not a string quartet or a wind quintet, um, should develop repertoire. And I'm thinking they should accept works from all composers, arrangers, and seek out music for that ensemble, which is sometimes very hard. Um, put it in a pile. Put it in a pile and, and then do two open rehearsals of the music in the order received. So there's there's no criteria, just if it fits the ensemble, we'll read it and do a, a public performance. Um, have the reading sessions open to the public too, so that to rep develop some rapport with the audience. Um, do a free performance where everybody, audience, musicians, maybe management, can vote if they want to hear the music again. This is where it doesn't become equal. It becomes personal. Um, so to start with, total equality. No, no consideration. Is it new? Is it old? Is it German? Is it whatever? Totally equal choice. You know, it's just go through the pile. Um, then the people that want to come to the concerts can vote what they like. And then the group can develop a style of repertoire that fits with what the public want to hear. It's pretty important to, to know your audience, to sell it in a way that, you know, you understand that. Um, this is a step in developing standard repertoire for the group where all involved had contributed to developing a repertoire style for the group. This is done fairly and equally up to the point where people vote on what they like, justice is blind, and so is the choice of music. It's all here now. So really, what's happening now is new. Even if it's Mozart, we've heard it a hundred times, it's new now. So it's all the same. Thanks for listening today, and have a nice day.